ready? The RPG genre is one that contains a lot of my favorite games ever made. I've been obsessed with RPGs since I was a kid in the NES days, playing Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior. It's a genre I hunger for even today, constantly clogging up my wish lists and backlog. I'm constantly playing new RPGs, old RPGs, RPGs from big studios, indie RPGs. I will play these games until I'm dead. I always tell a joke to my friends about my gaming collection. I say if I die, do whatever you want with my collection. Except Chrono Trigger? That game is coming six feet under with me. The thought of this joke led me to this video. If I had to choose RPGs to go to the grave with, what would they be and why? There are many I could choose, a lot from the same console. But to make it interesting, I'm applying some rules. 1. Physical games only, as I choosing to be buried with my PC is just a bit much. 2. I have to own the game and the console it is on. 3. I can only choose one game from each desired console. So with these self-imposed parameters present, I made my list. But before I share them with you, if you'd like to help out my channel, please watch this video in its entirety and share it. I would really appreciate it. Now let's go meet my maker and dive into the 9 RPGs I would be buried with. Crystalis for the NES First off, I didn't go with Final Fantasy or a Dragon Quest title because I feel their ports are better than their original versions. I went with Crystalis for the NES because it's my first action RPG I ever played and I've gone back and replayed it multiple times and I still enjoy it as much as I did back when I first played it. It has fun gameplay, cryptic NES bullshit, and an overworld track that is one of my favorites of all time. It's a really good example of where the action RPG genre was at the time and all also, I don't want to meet Death and have him think I'm just some basic bitch. Final Fantasy Adventure for the Game Boy I've talked about this game a couple of times, and I truly believe it's the best RPG on the Game Boy. It has fun and simple action, enough story to keep you interested and aware of what's going on, and an amazing soundtrack. It is perfectly designed for the platform that it is on. Thinking about this game brings up memories of playing it on road trips growing up, which then makes me remember the vacations themselves. It brings a warm fondness to me, and I would think it'd be fitting to have it laying beside me as I wither away underground. Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo No surprise here, I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, I've talked about it in other videos, I talk about it all the damn time. Chrono Trigger is my favorite game ever. It looks great, plays great, sounds great, but most importantly, Chrono Trigger is absolutely timeless. This game does not show its age. It's just as good now as it was back in 95. I beat this game every other year. I never and will never get tired of it. It's a masterpiece. I like to think I'm a pretty open-minded guy when it comes to gaming. I like to crack jokes about some games, but my list of games I actually hate or dislike is pretty small, and I'm more just not interested in a game versus hating it. Friends will talk about games I don't care for, and I like hearing about it. Sometimes somebody will poop on a game I like, and I'm cool with that too. Chrono Trigger is the one game that if you shit on it, then your opinion is objectively and subjectively wrong. You are wrong, and you will forever be wrong. I 100% Kool-Aid drink this game, and I will fucking fight you about it. It's the greatest thing invented by humans, and you would have to pry it from my cold, dead hand to take it away from me. Shining Soul 2 for the Game Boy Advance Here's a fun little dungeon crawler that I really got into. You pick a class, grind enemies for treasures and experience, and customize your build. It's basically just a Diablo clone. A big reason I like this game is it reminds me of discovering ROMs and emulation. Back when I was a teenager, emulation was just a complete mind blow. The Shining Soul games were some of the first GBA games I emulated, and it's just stuck with me. I remember finally getting physical copies and playing them at the job I was at at the time. It's a perfect mix of mindless grinding and fun to get through those slow ass work days. It's these memories that makes it deserve a top spot next to my rotting corpse. Valkyrie Profile for the PS1 
Picking an RPG for the original PlayStation was actually really hard because there are so many bangers for this console. The Valkyrie Profile gets my vote, not because it was a treasured game from my past, but because I actually played through it somewhat recently and it blew me away. I love the non-linear storytelling where the game is basically just choose your own adventure. I love the graphics, music, and the combat system, as well as all the mythology the game draws from. This RPG screams out to me because even as someone that has played RPGs for decades, an RPG from the past that I've never played could still wow me all these years later. That means something to me. Therefore, it goes into the casket with my dead body. Final Fantasy Tactics, War of the Lions for the PSP. Originally on the PS1, which was a good game in its own right, the PSP port was just miles better. It cleaned up the translation and added some awesome animated cutscenes. The game has a great story, but it's the combat system that won me over so hard. Strategizing combat maneuvers, class setups and combinations, identifying enemy weaknesses, trying to outflank your opponent, I mean, it's like Square took chess and injected it with RPG steroids. It's the perfect example of a great game in the tactical RPG genre. It shows that great gameplay doesn't have to be your normal turn-based or ATB systems, nor does it have to be action. The game has just gotten better for me over time to where I consider it now one of my favorite games in the Final Fantasy series. Thus, it earns the right to wither away to dust right beside me for all time. X-Men Legends for the PS2 here we have another dungeon crawler slash Diablo-like clone, but with the skin of Marvel's X-Men. It has fun and simple gameplay with a comic book-ass comic book story alongside it. The X-Men are my favorite Marvel heroes, but that alone isn't why I chose this game. It's the memories I had playing at co-op with friends back in the day. We were in our late teens, early 20s, on our own, almost no money in our pockets, and we gathered in a friend's basement and just became so sucked into this game. Enjoying the story, trying to solve all the trivia questions, all while laughing, talking shit, and just having a grand old time, till 5am the next morning, where all of a sudden our friend's girlfriend came down to yell at us for being too fucking loud and preventing her from getting any sleep. Ah, uh, memory. We will enjoy it. Fallout 3 for the Xbox 360. Before playing Fallout 3, I had never played a Bethesda game, never knew about Bethesda games, never cared to know. Fallout 3 opened my eyes and smashed that ridiculous notion out of my head. If you know me and my channel, I like games that are non-linear. I don't prefer to follow a set path, but more blaze my own trail and do whatever I want. To this day, no other game has made me feel that idea as much as Fallout 3 has. Yes, there are objectives to follow, but that's not how I played it. I opened the map, picked a direction, and just went that way. There were always new enemies to find, NPCs to interact with, locations to discover. This was a new feeling for me at the time, the feeling of true wandering and discovery. What drove this game home for me when I first played it was the fact that the game is in the United States where I live. The locations are real. That and discovering what the fuck happened to the world and trying to discover its mysteries, I was just hooked. I put hundreds of hours into this game and it led me to becoming a true Bethesda simp. I've played all their games since, and they are one of my favorite developers today. For my final pick, I got Final Fantasy VII for PC. Yeah, remember when PC games were physical? Petridge Farm remembers. Oh, those were the days. Final Fantasy VII is probably my second favorite Final Fantasy game. I replayed this game so many damn times growing up, it's very dear to my heart. Here's a story I like to tell which is a treasured memory for me. I grew up with a brother, so we pretty much shared everything. When the PS1 and the Nintendo 64 were out, I wanted a PS1, but we ended up getting a Nintendo 64. Later on, I remember seeing the commercial on TV for Final Fantasy VII. It looked awesome, and I was even more amazed that I saw a Final Fantasy game advertised on television. I really wanted to play it, but had no PlayStation. Some more time goes by and we were visiting my grandparents who lived in Florida for Christmas at the time, and to my surprise, I was gifted a PS1 and a copy of Final Fantasy VII. Obviously, this is just a badass gift, but what made it more meaningful was it was the first console that was mine alone. I remember quickly running to the 13-inch portable TV that we would bring on vacations, hooking it up, and just playing Final Fantasy VII from morning till night for days. Not only are these memories great, but what sealed it was how awesome the game was. Great story, characters, combat, visuals, I mean, there's a reason it has a remake and has spawned a shitload of games. The game is just fantastic, it shall rest easy next to my maggot-ridden leftovers.
Obviously, I wouldn't get buried with any game. I'd rather people take my games and enjoy them after I'm gone. Well, maybe bury me with Chrono Trigger. I'm actually a little serious about that one. But I think it's fun and important to remember and point out the games that mean the most to us. Really, when I say I want to be buried with a game, it's more I want to be buried with the memories and great times they brought. On a long enough timeline, these physical copies can turn to dust and be gone forever. But the sharing of their stories and people's experiences with them is what makes them immortal. What are some RPGs that you would want to be buried with? Feel free to share them. Thank you for watching.